All right, so I just added this little flourish, which I think helps it just as a black outline. So I've saved it there. And then the last thing I might try before I add the, the subtitle in there in my banner. And again, ideally you're making it better and better as you go is to try outlining the individual letter forms with white so that they overlap. So that's, that's easy to try, but it can also go really wrong. So to be safe, I'm gonna lock all these other layers, right, that are part of the design. Making my own version here, inspired by something else. And then, I'm going to make a duplicate of these closed paths. So Command C. There's no shortcut for duplicating that I know of in Illustrator. Make a new layer above, say edit, paste in place. And now I'm going to add a stroke. And that stroke is going to be white, 100%. Let's see how that looks. And let's see, I have to put some in front of others, right? How did I resolve it in my sketch? Yeah, so the S would be behind everything else. But this shouldn't be difficult to do. I'm going to leave the sketch behind just so I can see the lame. So let's see. So the E should be on top. Yes. So what do I do? I go into it, and I'm just going to rearrange these elements. So I can click on them to see which one it is. So I have this group first. I'm going to move that to the very top. Could have moved the L right underneath it. I'm basically reversing the order. The E and the M are okay. That's because these were done as copies, right? Just to make it really easy to, to know where they are, I'm going to put them all in order. And so though for our black and white logo, I didn't want you to build white into it. In this case, for versatility, I think I want to build white into it. It means it will just always be there. And now I can compare the compare the two, right? That versus that. And I do like it with the white outline. Now the problem with strokes is they don't scale evenly as smart objects always. So now that I like that, I'm going to take that layer. I'll turn off the one below it just so it doesn't confuse, All right? And I'm going to turn off the fill and instead outline the stroke. So go to Object, Path, Outline Stroke. So now it's a white fill. Ah, but that gives me a problem. So let's undo that. Let's see if I can outline just the stroke on its own without having it cut through. So path outline stroke. Yes, good. 
And the reason it needs to be have the black still in there is so the stroke can be uh, tied to each letter so that the black shapes are kind of cut in, in, in between. But I also have this solution if I ever need it. All right, very good. So now, how do I do the subtype? Well, let's save it. Basically, I'm going to use a typeface I like. Might use the same one even, but I don't think so. So let's see, what are some of the options I have? That one, which I haven't used. That one, which I did use. And this one. This one's a little different. I like it. It's a little more decorative and it doesn't take up a lot of space. So I'm going to unlock that, copy it, make a duplicate of it, edit paste in place, right? And this is still with the type tool, but I'm going to do that type on path. So I'm going to use my pen tool. And I'm going to try to draw that curve. Be generous on both ends. Close it up. convert it to that just so I can see it, but I'm going to make this an empty path. And I'm going to move this anchor point a little bit. Give me a lot of space on each side. Okay, so that's basically where I want the type to go, more or less. Now I select it, and I'm going to make that stroke empty, so it's an empty path that I can do type on with the type on path tool. Now I paste in, but obviously this is way too big and it's not the right text. So let me really shrink that down. And instead of well, for now, I'll let it be a, a, a black fill, but it will be a white fill very soon. All right, so using the type on path tool, come on. In LC, art, club, I'm putting three spaces between each word because this is a very condensed letting and digital art. And then that allows me to go across the whole thing, hold down option, and spread it out, and take some of the spaces from in between away. Often for little banners like this, I like to hold down option and do the star key. And that gives me a little uh, centered bullet between, which can be nice. You can get that from any typeface that you choose. I actually don't like how this one's a hexagon. Or an octagon. Yeah. So let me change that to another typeface that will be circular and then just shrink the size. Oh, actually maybe not. Keep it, keep it that size. And then I can copy that just like in a word processor, as the spacing between all of them. Okay. 
So you have a lot of control. I'm not really that fond of that ampersand either. So let's try. Ooh, that's nice. All right. So now I can select all of it and just shrink it down a little bit. Like that. We'll move everything. You can use a large selection tool and move it into place. Change its tilt. Use the arrow keys to nudge it where I want it. And then let's change its color. So still all with the type tools. So if I wanted to change uh, typeface and stuff, I still could. I'm going to change it to white instead of black. All right, now if I put that above my little swoosh layer, I can do my final adjustments, turn off my sketch. And the first thing I'll do is adjust the curve of the path a little bit. Bring it down. Bring this anchor point up. And just generally work on it so it fits in nicely. This is typesetting. A little bit more space on the front, take a little bit away from here. Yeah, so I think that reads pretty well. Nice. All right, so what I'm going to do is duplicate that or copy it as is my fashion. Lock it, turn it off, make a new layer then edit, paste in place, and then right click it and create outlines. So they're no longer based on having a certain typeface to be able to read it. Now here's, here's what's interesting. This is my color example. All right, let's see, let's turn off Uh, I gotta separate this out. Interesting. Let's turn that off. Okay. Something I was interested in maybe bringing over was this kind of energetic outline. So I can do that just to, to play with it. So how do I do that? I take the small selection tool and I select with holding down shift each of these outline vector shapes. I could use the lasso as well, but that would be a little trickier. Hopefully this will do a good job selecting each of them. They are rather disconnected. As long as you hold down shift, it will just add to your selection. And white is not part of this because I ignored the whites. Now I want to copy that, lock it, new layer, paste in place. Yeah, I didn't get all of it. Bummer. All right, let's try that again. Might as well add to what I was able to get. Zoom in this time. To do it with the lasso to kind of get all those anchor points, I just have to be careful not to overlap with the black at all. 